so next up we have uh why do i spend all my life formatting tables um with Fillmore? that's a good question why do i spend all my life formatting tables in r christina thank you Wonderful. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Christina Fillmore, and I am a data scientist from GSK. And here I'm going to today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about probably why you spend your life formatting tables. So I'm sure that this has all happened to us at some point where we have sat and we were like QCing tables, right? So you're like doing your QC, you're doing having a great time. And you start doing your QC and you usually do like a little little look through, right? You check and you're like, ah, the numbers seem right. Let me run it through whatever automated program you're using to do the tests. I don't know if you use Proc Bear or you might be using DFDF, whatever you're doing, start doing that. And um, the spacing is off. Your alignment isn't the same as the original person. So now you're going to spend some time formatting tables so that you can check that your numbers are right. Even though no one will see this table, the formatting is a little bit not useful but you need to get it to formatted, formatted in order to do the QC. So that's like, fine, we do that all the time. That's one reason you're gonna spend your life formatting tables. Another, so like time goes on and you're probably, you finish this and it's time to create some slides. So you're gonna create some slides to put this table into context and you're gonna tell a story. And as you start making your slides, inevitably something doesn't quite fit. You know, like the tables that we make, we make them for typically like RTF style type documents, like kind of eight and a half by 11s or whatever. And um, that doesn't fit on the slide all the time. So maybe for instance, you need to remove the percent signs in order to actually get everything to fit on your slide. Amazing. So you do that for one slide and, and then another slide and another slide until you've made a whole slide deck and you've you know, spent some time formatting your tables, taking this information and redoing it again and again. So time goes by, great. You finished the study, it's now time to submit to a journal. You're ready to submit to this journal. And then the journal tells you, oh, they have a rule about p-value rounding. And you're like, great, I love this for me. <laughs> I now have to re-round these values, but you can't round a rounded value, so you get to run the analysis again to get a QC to be rounded so that it meets the journal's standards. So that's like a lot, and it happens all the time in a lot of small and big ways that you're going to be kind of tweaking these tables that we use over and over again. And so the solution is actually something that was already mentioned today. It's going to be analysis results data. So you're probably familiar a little bit with this kind of workflow. You you have your atom, oh, you have your atom data set, and you do some analysis, and then you also do a bit of formatting. Not a lot of formatting, maybe a lot of formatting. You do some formatting to get some sort of RTF, and then you take that RTF and you then put it into a CSR or presentations or publications or what have you. But each time you're going from an, the RTF to a new place, you're doing that like little bit of formatting on top. So, you know, rather than doing that, the notion of an analysis results data is actually, instead of going from atoms straight to an RTF, you go atoms to this new data standard, the analysis results data. Analysis results data is meant to be easy to get to, and it allows you to have a central place to start from that's going to be easier to do the formatting. So you don't have to undo previous formatting to do formatting. So just a side interlude about analysis results data really quick. You don't really need to spend too much time talking about it today, but the key features are that it is unformatted. You're looking for one value per row. You want long, you want skinny. Think of tidy data or normalized data, that sort of stuff. Um, and then you also want to make sure you have kind of distinct grouping columns for each grouping variable. So none of this like blank row with NAs in it in order to get the spacing right for the display that you're doing or even putting in spacing on the front end. We're not doing that with analysis results data. It's more like what you'd expect to get out of if you did like a group by and then a summarize, something like that. And then finally, what you want to have is you want to include everything. So do you, you want your displays information? You want like your big ends, anything you want to display in your table should be in this analysis results data. 
So for more information, um, Novartis actually wrote a great paper called Why We Should Respect Analysis Results Data. And so you can totally go and read that, or you can go and look at Sam's slide from earlier about ARDs a little bit. Um, CDISC has started drafting up what they believe their specs should be. So, you know, there's a lot of things about it. So back to formatting, we've taken a detour. I know it still sounds like you're still doing a lot of formatting. You're just now formatting when you go out to the thing you're trying to get to rather than all like doing it earlier, which is kind of true, but we have a plan for that. So if we think back to how things normally work, right? You have someone who makes your mocks. They usually make mocks in maybe Excel or Word. They make a picture and someone comes along later and they create a table that looks like that picture. And someone QCs and does a table that looks like that picture. And then finally, someone might write that into a CSR. But each time they're not, there's no information that they can really leverage to make making that picture easier for them. So rather than just making it as a picture, we think that maybe you should extract that formatting information and put it out as metadata. And if you take the format how you want things to look and make that formatting metadata, it means you can apply it to all sorts of data sets as you get them. So we made a, built a package called tformat that helps you do that. So how tformat works is tformat allows you to define your tab table metadata. And then, so you define your table metadata, and then you can create your mocks based off of that table metadata. And I'll print it out to GT. So for those who don't know, GT is a very common tabling package that's supported by RStudio. And we really like it in part because it goes out to PDFs and RTFs and Word documents and all the things that we commonly need to go out to in, um, in Pharma. So that's great. We've defined some table metadata, then we get a table out, it makes our mocks for us, but we were talking about ARDs, right? So what happens is when you get your ARD, you can combine T format allows you to combine that formatting metadata plus your ARD. And it will format all your values for you according to that metadata and spit it out into GT. So it makes it so that you have an easy process where you're defining once at the beginning of your table creation journey and you don't need to redefine it. So what does what is a table, right? Um, how does this work? So when we look at a table, we kind of broke it down into component parts. You think about, you have your body, table body, which is great, has all the numbers you're looking for. That's really helpful information. Uh, but the numbers are only as helpful as the information around them. So you also have your columns and your groups and your labels. And then because we're in pharma, just having columns and rows and labels and stuff is not enough. We also have things like our row groups, which are these kind of sections where we're not going to repeat age years a bunch of times. We're going to have that as the group level, and that should be only repeated once. You have this row group styling that you want to do, this kind of row-wise styling. And additionally, you also have column styling. We in pharma tend to have a lot of feelings about like aligning on spaces or aligning on decimal places or what have you. So we want to be able to do all of that. So when it comes to working with a T format object, how T format lets you define all of this is you either take your T format and supply it with like the static information, this var, var one is the grouping variable for the, from the ARD, or you supply it with a plan. So you have a body plan to define the formatting in the body of the table. You have a column plan to define the formatting of the columns, like things like you know the order or are you renaming things. You have a group row group plan to define the row group styling, and you also have the call style plan that allows you to do this column styling. So each of these plans allows you to independently specify parts of your table to build out a whole vision in an easy and kind of composable way. So. Just to connect all of this back to ARDs really quickly, how it works is if this is our a part of our ARD on our left and our table we're trying to make on the right is T format. The first thing you do when you make a T format is typically define what are the values, what are the columns that are in your ARD. 
So here, everything is capitalized. So you can see that the group column here is called capital G group. So you, you'll put into your ARD, you'll put into your little T format, like group is the column we're looking for. And then label is the label column, capital L label. So label equals capital L label, done. And column equals column and so on and so forth to value equals value. Now you can see I still have one additional parameter here and that's the param column. And the param column is important for us because you can see on like the second row here, this has two values, it's mean and standard deviation. If you just apply the four columns that we've talked about so far, there's no way that T format will know that this value is the mean one and it should come before the standard deviation one. So you need this param column here to supply a little bit more information for the values so that T format can work and do all of the automations that it wants to do. So then the param column, which you should just say, similar to the other ones, param equals param, allows you to do all of that. So that's like kind of how things generally work in terms of taking your ARD and making it into the information, like providing that information to T format. But now I'm gonna just quickly ish go through the body plan. The reason I'm going through the potty plan is because it turns out all of the plans that we have work really similarly. So this is probably one of the slightly more complicated plans and I'm gonna go through that. But if you want more information and you want to be able to like do all of the things, there's like a website <laughs> and we can I'll talk to you, talk about that in a second. But let's just think about the body plan for one second here. So the body plan, as I said before, controls formatting the values. So let's, follow the journey of this 15. So this 15 over here becomes that 15 over there. You can see that like the columns and the ends and the group, the label and the group, that, yep, that tracks. But this 15 is 15.00 and this 15 is 15, no decimal places, rounded to the first digit. So how did we do that? We did that by using a format. So we have a function called format that works in a kind of say what you see sort of mantra. You say you want it to look like X, X with no decimal places and nothing else, and you will see that it looks like that. Um, so it tends to map whatever you tell it to look like. But how do, we, how do we make sure that that format doesn't get applied to everything? Because we have a mean, we have a standard deviation. We don't always want it to look like that. We just want that 15, and to be fair, everything on that row to look like. So we're going to use what we call a structure, a format structure. So most of our plans are formed up of lists of structures where the structure is used to identify where the format is gonna be applied. So it has made up of two really important things. First thing, the group val. The group val tells you for which group should this format be applied to. Um, and here it's group val equals dot default. In other words, everything. <laughs> And then the label, the next thing it has is this label val, which means that it should be for any time there's a, within your ARD, the label column equals to N, that's where this should be applied to. So if you think about it, this format structure should be applied to any group with the label value of N. And so it ends up applying to the first row and the fourth row. So you can see it's applied to here and here. So now let's go to the next row. We want to do more formatting. Let's do the mean and the standard deviation. So we're gonna have another format structure. And this time our group value is gonna be age and years because we have a very small table and so it's only this. And the label value is going to be the mean and standard deviation. So it should just apply to that one row, great. But that row is a little bit complicated. It's definitely more complicated than our ends from up above. It's more complicated because this time it has formats and it has a mean and a standard deviation, and they're formatted differently. So we have another type of format called format combined. Format combined allows you to combine multiple different formats together. And again, just like the previous, it uses a say what you see sort of memo. Um, so we're gonna say that we want mean to go first and anything in curly brackets refers to the parameter value. So mean first, then parenthesis, standard deviation, parenthesis. And then it allows you to supply a list, like supply as many um, formats as you have. So if you needed to have 
three things. Say you are looking the quantile, first quantile, median, third quantile. You could equally just put them in there. You can have as many things as you want within your format combined. You just need formats for all of them. So here we have formats for the mean and formats for the standard deviation. Mean only has one decimal place and standard deviation has two. Great. Mean has one, standard deviation has two. This is exactly what I want it to look like. Perfect. So now we go on to the last two. So the last, there's still two rows that are unaccounted for, which fair enough. These rows are going to be the slightly trickier rows, right? Because for any time you have this kind of count data, the n and percent, you're going to have potentially a bunch of different labels. So you don't really want to have to go through and define the specific label value for each one of those. So it'd be nice if we could just say for everything that's not already done, which is exactly what we can do. Because how, to, how plans work is it will always take, it will go from newest to oldest. So first it will go through and apply this, and then it'll apply this, and then anything that's left over gets that top one applied to it. So given that this is, the group value here is default and the label value is default, it should apply to everything, but because the other ones came first, that's why they're not gonna be applied to it. So that's great. Now you might ask, like, why do you use the newest first rather than the top? Um, that feels a little bit strange. Strange, And that's because T-Format allows you to do layering. So what that means is that you can take a T-Format here, and let's just think back to the original, the original, one of the original problems, which was you had to change your rounding of your P-values. So we had a T-Format that would make that original table. Great. Amazing. We love that. But now we need to change that rounding for that P-value. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in another form, a body plan, add in another T format. We're going to make another T format. And this time is just going to consist of a body plan with a format structure for those P values. And because it's the newest thing, it will overwrite that, that portion of the old T format while keeping everything else. Because we don't want to make any other changes. We're just changing that one rounding. So it will result in a new T format that is a combination of the two. And what that means is when you think about the future, if you have analysis results data plus T formats, you're able to have a kind of central, this is what we want this table to look like, but also you can modify and tweak what, how you want it to look like as you go between presentations, RTFs or publications easily and not having to always start from like you know, ground zero. So in summary, T formats and ARDs can really, you know, reduce the time that you have to spend formatting because formatting is never fun. It also can make it so that it's not off the off, it takes it off the critical path because what's less fun than spending time formatting is spending time formatting at like seven o'clock at night and you just want to go home, but you have to get this QC to pass and you're really stressed out and the spaces won't match. No one likes that. And finally, it will hopefully give you the flexibility to change the look of your tables for different outputs, for doing different things easily and in a kind like cohesive and comprehensive so that is my presentation today. Um, and I just wanted to thank you all and like thank specifically like Ellis who, and, and Becca who have been super helpful. Um, they also work at GSK and have been very helpful at working on this project. They couldn't have done it without you. We have a wonderful website here at, um, on GitHub. It is open source, available through GitHub. And if you have any other questions, you could also email me at christina.e.fillmore at gsk.com. But uh, yeah. All right, Christina, thank you so much. That was uh, fantastic. I always love seeing the tooling that comes out of trying to help make something much simpler or easier to maintain. And this is, I love, I love this tool. Um, 